all the students in that school create their day. All of those students in that school get serious about actually no longer becoming the victim of their day, but actually blessing the day and allowing it to unfold equal to their will. Now, everybody has their own measurable level of will. But if we practice our mental rehearsal and our skill in being able to do it will show that certain brain circuits will grow as a result of our effort. We'll get, it'll get easier to do, in other words. If we accept that idea, then it will allow us to go back the next day and do it with more certainty and with more acceptance. That in itself is no different than praying. You see, there's no religious text that says thought doesn't matter. There's no religious text that doesn't say your prayer and your intention shouldn't be answered by God. But go explaining how that happens is what quantum physics and the observer is all about. But still, when we can make thought more real than anything else, our brain is designed to do that. The frontal lobe with its enormous space is the altar in which we place a thought. And it gives us the permission to hold the thought for an extended period of time, and it lowers the volume to the external stimuli. We lose track of time and space. That's the moment we're stepping into the quantum field. That's the moment that now we're making thought more real than anything else. So when, when I create my day, my interpretation, what you saw in the movie is my interpretation of what I do. In other words, if I'm going to sit down and create my day, if I'm going to make the effort, then I am bold enough to ask for a response. I'm bold enough to say, I want it to come and I want it to be a way that eliminates all of my doubt and I want it to be just right outside the boundaries of what I can accept or what I can predict and bring it in a way that usually will keep me in surprise or keep me in wonder so that it, it inspires me to do it again and to learn more and to, and to apply more knowledge to my next creation. If, if you're the observer in that process, then who are you talking to? Well, it's a great question. There's actually me, the observer. That's my personality, my free-willed self, given permission to do whatever I want in my life. Everybody has that free will. And then we have a constant aspect of ourself the observer who's observing life in all of things. It is the force, the intelligence, the will that holds it all together. Now, every human being has that that is alive. They're connected to it. And it is allowing and loving enough to give us life independent of our moods, our choices, our opinions. When that observer is observing life into me, and I emulate that same principle in observing my life. I am enacting the same action as the observer creating life. I am creating a life. And when we align with that principle, we are emulating our greatest potential, which is creation. Do we live in a pre-established artifact of some kind? So I just want to bump that idea. Is there, is there an artifact out there of objective reality you know, because there's also this idea that we're creating reality. Hmm. Mm, let's see how I'm answering this. I'm just asking this because these are very common questions. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I have... I, I think there's a... I think that there's a very strong, unanimous social agreement amongst human beings because we experience the same things externally in our world and our brain really maps a reflection of all the experiences that we can have in, in our world. So there is a unanimous agreement of the laws that govern three dimensions, four dimensions even. And we live by those laws and our brain really has mapped all the possibilities and potentials over pretty much eons of experience. But there's still room for the brain to grow and there's still room for us to evolve to greater virtues and to greater levels of mind. If that's the case, then it means then that we have to begin to break from the social agreements 
and the social consciousness that keeps everything intact and everything in order. That means then that we have to really gain knowledge that's outside of convention. Whether it's social convention or religious convention or scientific convention, we have to reach for information and knowledge that is beyond the boundaries of what's currently accepted. Now, to personalize that information and knowledge means we're going to apply it to actually try it out to have a new experience. Once we have that experience now, it begins to change the way in which our world should show up or present itself to us. But an experience isn't enough. We have to be able to reproduce that experience until it can become automatic. Once we do that, now we're beginning to master a new level of mind and then we start to break from the agreements uh, of, of four dimensions. We begin to defy the principles of this social agreement and it is a, a collective consciousness and the collective order allows the quantum field to respond to that. But by the same means, we have the ability to be able to process greater levels of mind, which then starts to separate us from this social agreement. And now we become individuals.